friends welcome to the fourth lecture on safety in planning and design stages which is the lecture under the module 4 where we are talking about safety measures in design and operation. This is an NPTEL online course on HSC organized at IIT Madras. Let us quickly see what are those challenges in deep water exploration because nowadays we all understand that oil exploration has moved from shallow deep to ultra deep waters, the platform geometry, the operational mechanisms, the equipments, tools etcetera being used for deep water exploration or production are significantly different in terms of the technology updates compared to the earlier ones. Therefore, it is required that all people and personnel involved in the process planning, design, construction, decommissioning needs to have a strong update which is essentially circumscribing safety standards as well. Let us quickly understand what are those common challenges when we talk about deep water exploration. Deep water oil and gas exploration demands better technologies in design, production and operations because we do not have investments towards high capital cost and the time lag for the production facilities. So, we should have the state of art proven tested technologies which can accommodate the weather conditions, variations in design, uncertainties in loads arising from deep water conditions, offshore distances in terms of its design, structural analysis, production, operational features etcetera. Therefore, advanced technologies are on the demand which are required to be used and these technologies are also used to forecast the reservoir performance which is essentially important for checking the feasibility of any platform in a given location. Therefore, there is huge demand of equipments which are foreseen in terms of oil rigs, FPSOs, FSOs, tankers and specialized screw etcetera. So, when there is a huge demand of these kind of equipments, it is also important that the personnel trained to safely operate these equipments are also on high demand. So, these challenges can be now grouped very easily. At level 1, we can group them related to physical and geological factors. At level 2, we can group them related to environmental management issues and at level 3, we can group them which are issues related to safety alone. When you talk about level 1 issues, they are very simple and straightforward. The challenges are posed to overcome technological and geological challenges which come or which may come in way when you talk about deep water exploration production. The challenges are posed to provide comprehensive support services, it is necessary to provide huge capital outlay. There is also necessity for providing development which are effective solutions to shorten the production and delivery time. That is a very important aspect ladies and gentlemen because the production delay will always enhance the initial investment towards operation features of the platform. One should also like to invest in terms of exploring green sites to find new deposits that is the demand of the day. When you talk about the challenges in level 2 issues which are related to environmental management cases, challenges in this case are posed to managing sustainable resources effectively to minimize the qualified technical personnel because technical personnel are also equally expensive as that of equipments. We must think of lowering operational cost of the entire project. We must also able to attract expertise and investors from all over the world to invest on the platform production. It is important that we must try to overcome the territorial disputes between the water sharing basis for oil and gas exploration. It is important that there are issues related to managing impact of recession and financial crisis plays a very important role in any new development of platforms in deep water exploration. One should also learn how to manage uncertainty in oil prices because that governs the whole economic boundary of the new exploration in general. Coming to HSC issues in level 3, we can focus on the deep water exploration exclusively under the following heads. Protection of personnel and plant from hydrocarbon releases and gases and therefore, we should enable safe inventory of gases. One should be able to think about the reduction in noise level of the platforms which is a very important hazard cost to the work people or workforce 
on platforms. One should also have thought process focusing on mitigating the extreme weather conditions because as we move towards deep and ultra deep waters, the scenario in terms of environmental or weather conditions also become highly uncertain. It is important that we should play a role in educating the players in oil and gas industries about the importance of safety. Neglecting safety or sidelining safety measures will never lead to a successful production history. Safety lessons go beyond protecting life and assets, but also the environment. This is a very important education which is to be imparted to people, not only people working on plant, but also to the public, because canvassing HSE will certainly lead to a sustainable business. Now, the question asked in mind is what can be done to ensure safety in deep water production? One should abide strictly to the set of standards in design, performance and operation. Violation of safety norms in terms of standards in design will cost havoc in terms of oil production when we move to ultra deep waters. One should also ensure a very high certain degree of compliance in terms of standards to be followed in the above regulations. It is important that one promotes safety culture in all facets of exploration and production. It is important to encourage capacity building in risk and hazard management in the given industry. Enhance safety of aging installations. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very important that aging installations pose a special kind of threat and problems in terms of safety. Therefore, one should ensure asset integrity in terms of focusing on enhancing safety on aging installations. Let us quickly talk about the braces on safety in exploration and production stage alone. One should create multiple layers of regulatory protection which are implemented in exploratory and production stage. Promote safety culture and workforce involvement to practice safety. Create independent well examiners and honor their reports in terms of near miss events. Insist on weekly drilling operations report which is very important feedback to enhance safety especially during the drilling operations. Audit the submitted reports to look for the near miss events and educate people on board to talk about the near miss events. Therefore, one can mitigate, one can plan for near mitigation of these occurrences in the near future. Promote safety culture at all levels of workforce, no exemption to anybody. Frequent meetings of offshore regulators to discuss relative comfort in the regulatory measures and adequacy to check oil spill responses are important steps involved in terms of managing safety for deep water exploration and production facilities. As I said in the beginning, we will talk about aging installations. There are special issues which are related to aging installations. Asset integrity with aging installation is one of the main issue in the present scenario. It is very important to strengthen the workforce with adequate experience, competence and training to handle aging installations. Management measures to differentiate life extension should be understood from day to day problem solving need to be addressed very carefully. It is very important friends to understand what are those differences in between the life extension of an aging installation to that of managing a day to day problem in these kind of assets which are aged enough to cause problems because of material degradation, because of process degradation etcetera. Operating beyond the intended life is one of the major problem which brings technological, managerial and economic challenges automatically inherent because of the aging installations. Let us quickly see what are those common HSE activities which are focused on aging issues. Detailed inspection programs are necessary and they should be implemented on aging installations by European Union etcetera. This is a very salient example which the global standards can follow, so that the aging installation inspections becomes very vital if we really wanted to improve safety standards which is one of the common practice in European Union in the present scenario. Technology projects on structural integrity, 
fire and explosion integrity and material degradation due to corrosion or evidences which are seen in the recent past which has shown high and huge investments in terms of understanding their deterioration processes on aging installations. Therefore, what are the key objectives of HSE towards aging installations? Principal aim is of course, to ensure that the risks to asset integrity with aging and life extension are controlled effectively. Objectives of this program should be to raise awareness for specific consideration of aging and life extension issues, to identify shortcomings and enforce appropriate remedial action, to develop common industry approach which is very vital in terms of HSC management, especially on aging installations. A basic and fundamental question comes in safety is how to improve HSC culture by and large in operational plants. Friends, it is important that one of the most successful methods seen in the previous practice is to adopt minimum industry safety training what we call as MIST. Friends, it is important and you will agree strongly that industrial safety training is a very vital part of enhancing, practicing, implementing and deriving benefits from safety implementation programs. So, one should be sure that minimum industrial safety training is important to all personnel working on board as well as public near around the plant. MIST applies to two group of workforce namely one is the training and assessment for new entrants to the industry. The second is training and assessment for existing experienced workers. Friends please understand the second point is more important. It is not that you are experienced therefore, you can be exempted from training and assessment. There are different modules of training and assessment which are imparted to people who are experienced in comparison to the people who are new entrants to the plant. Therefore, MIST is applicable to both set of workforces. Let us now focus on what are those or what could be those areas of training where these people can be imparted. Knowledge on hazardous offshore environment is a very vital and basic knowledge to be imparted to these people. Knowledge on safety observation systems is very important because every equipment used especially in offshore production come with lot of safety inbuilt inherent safety. One should know an updated knowledge on these safety observation systems in terms of signs, alarms, signals, warnings, sirens etcetera as a part of the safety program implemented to these workforce personnel. Understanding risk assessment process is also a very important educational level of understanding which should be imparted to these people. Understanding tasks that require permit to work is a very vital area because most of the accidents happen because this permit to work culture is even moderately violated. Understanding personal responsibilities in maintaining asset integrity is an inbuilt culture which should be promoted in almost all oil and gas industries if you really wanted to ensure asset integrity management. Using manual handling technique every day is a very important issue. People should follow the instructions given in the manual for equipment handling. They should strictly abide to those instructions and safety precautions given by the manual or by the manufacturer strictly in abundance. Controlling use of hazardous substances offshore is one of the vital strength which can be ensuring safety practices in offshore industry. Knowledge and practices of working at height is also nevertheless important. Knowledge about mechanical lifting activities is imparted to people working on board especially on crew members which is a very vital responsibility on the management side to impart very trained personnel to use mechanical lifting systems on board. Now, one can ask a very interesting question from the manual perspective, what would be the deliverables or the results or visible outputs by implementing minimum industrial safety training to the workforce personnel on board. It essentially helps to address legal compliance that is most important. It meets employee responsibility for ensuring that employees are trained and they are being made competent for this respective job. Globally respected quality assessment process is arising from MIST. MIST gives you a robust assessment 
which has verifiable and traceable records in terms of train. The second interesting benefit which is drawn from implementing MIST is that it enables employers to set standards for workplace, improving safety, improved competency, improved efficiency and therefore, improved protection to the environment are ensured by implementing MIST in your workforce. The third benefit could be it enables to achieve global standards dear friends. It creates ease movement of labor both in and out. There is a common workforce which can be shared by different industries in the world because all of them are equally trained and all of them are equally competent. It removes duplicate training and therefore, reduces cost significantly towards intensive training. It has got a visible demonstration of competence levels because trained personnel always practice and implement safety. Therefore, accidents are reduced by and large to a very significant effect. There is a common understanding of workforce competence levels which means that a teamwork is always progressive and is always competent enough to meet the safety standards that are required for oil and gas industries. Another area where people should focus on safety standards in design and planning stage is that emergency management. The moment you talk about emergency management, there are major emergency management which are very vital for improvising safety in oil and gas production facilities. What are major emergencies? One should have a very detailed list in a given production unit. What causes these major emergencies? One should have a very clear question and understanding about this. In what way they are different from other kind of emergencies? Who are responsible to manage these emergencies should be a very known answer to for all people working on board. How are they managed is very important. You have got to plan to manage these major emergency events. Now, let us quickly see a brief list of major emergencies which are arising in offshore exploration and production facilities. Fire, high pressure oil and gas leakage, maybe hydrocarbon, hydrogen sulphide, etcetera, well blowouts, increasing annulus pressure, blowout prevent leakages, export gas line rupture, export cooler line rupture, short circuit on high voltage equipments, structural collapse of the system, emergency arising from dropped objects, emergency arising from man overboard, emergency which comes from chopper crashing, which comes from vessel collision, which also comes from extreme weather conditions like earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes, etcetera and of course, most importantly not the least terrorist attack using explosives and sabotage. Once we understand what are those minimum industrial training to be given to people, why are they important, what are the benefits derived from implementing minimum industrial training standards to my workforce and how to manage major emergencies, then the major focus comes towards loss control measures. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very important in offshore industry, risk and reliability are closely associated to the cost factor arising from these benefits. Any risk which does not cause financial loss is not important in oil gas industry. So, loss control measures become very important because this is an economic parameter which guides what is the investment towards risk mitigation or risk propagation control techniques available in the industry. So, what are those loss control measures which can become a focus in oil and gas industries? Risk assessment and insurance coverage is one foremost area. So, it is important that they are highly vulnerable environment, it needs proper risk management, the competent risk survey needs to be conducted, identifying hazards, causes, consequences, mitigation means, equipments affected all should be detailly understood and study and examined. Estimating potential loss which arise from waiving of these standards is very important you must be able to establish risk levels in all scenarios and recommendations should be made for continuous improvement of safety implementation standards in the industry. Now, the question comes if risk is undesirable, can we talk about risk mitigation methods? Provide adequate systems 
to prevent initiation and escalation of risk problems, ensure good flow of transparent communication between the workforce on board, impart high level of training and employ only competent personnel to do a specific job, conduct mock drills periodically which will help them to manage all possible major emergencies. It is important that please ensure 24 hours readiness with the workforce to mitigate or to manage or to address preparedness related to emergency exigencies which can happen in the plant any time. Educate staff about the lessons learned from the past accidents. It is very important that they at least should not get repeated in the current plant. Create smart workforce to notice instantaneous changes in various items like structural loading, process deviation, crew management, etcetera. Because anything which is preventable is always acceptable in risk mitigation methodologies. Conduct root cause analysis, implementation and follow up procedures so that safety reports are well deliberated, deciphered and understood and of course, the recommendations from these reports are properly practiced and implemented when they are within the boundaries of Alap region. Check for degradation of safeguards because every equipment as I said will come with the safeguard mechanism. However, they can get deteriorated in due course of usage and time. Therefore, check for the degradation of the safeguards and keep on updating them over a period of time. Consider practical and economic feasibility before you advise any recommendations for safety audits. Non-conforming safety is an offence. This culture should be promoted. Check for any exceptions and do not allow any exceptions on violation of safety culture on board. Avoid leaning on safety violation and temptation. Conduct loss control tour segment wise, section wise, operation wise and area wise. Because this is one of the industrial area or important segment where safety culture can be brought down to its highest implementation standards if you make people to understand what are the losses which are foreseen because of violation of safety norms. Do not compensate and compromise on slow progress and unplanned shutdowns by reducing safety steps in a given process. Of course, very important increase the number of decision makers in critical decisions involving safety violations. Now, let us summarize very quickly what are these important steps which is to be followed in terms of safety in planning and design stages. Wherever disasters happen, please check for the following. What was the safety norms followed a prior to the disaster? How risk assessment was done in this case of the plant? What are the mitigation reports? which are prepared based on risk assessment and have they been implemented in terms of their recommendations. Please check for these questions and try to answer them wherever disasters happen in the industry. The second step could be wherever results of risk assessments are available in of a very high standard check for the following. Please ask a question is it guaranteed that disaster will not reoccur in the same plant? If so, Reassess the risk scenario and reinvestigate the plan for more intrinsic hazard, process hazards in particular. The third could be visualize post scenario and prevent in the time lapse cost because of this. Nullify probability of major disaster than to face them. Improvements in safety measures should come from the industry and not from the stakeholders. Rules are needed than proposals prescriptions and references. Friends, in this lecture we talked about a very good summary about what are the different steps which need to be practiced to ensure safety standards, what is minimum industrial safety training, what are the benefits, what are general major emergencies which come from offshore production facilities, what are those challenges which come from deep water oil exploration and so on. I think this summary will help you to put safety guidelines in planning and stage guidelines etcetera. Thank you very much.